Tonight, Congresswoman Martha Roby visited Troy. Find out why. Plus, girls say delegates learn about patriotism. Stay tuned, Troy. Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello, and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for June 13, 2012. I'm Brittany Harris. And I'm Bailey Majors. Thank you for joining us this evening. The square in downtown Troy is home to several of Troy's local businesses, and in the near future, the square is going to look a little bit sharper. Judson Garner reports. Tuesday evening, Troy City Council had its bi-weekly meeting and discussed the plans that will give Troy's downtown square a little nip-tuck. We have a committee mm -hmm. that has been studying what can we do to uh, improve the downtown mm -hmm. area, and they, they're doing some complaints. And as you can see, the square in downtown Troy features many trees planted along the sidewalks, and although they're beautiful and healthy, they're causing some problems. They have outgrown that spot right there, and their root system's going under the sidewalks, and ultimately it's cracking our sidewalks, so we need to get them removed to preserve our sidewalks in front of our stores. The trees on the outside edge of the square are blocking names of businesses, for example. But the trees will not be the only change. We're trying to get a conformative streetscape to help our downtown area. Sanders says benches made of recycled plastic will replace the slightly damaged ones currently on the square, along with the new trash bins made of the same material. A swing will be installed and the flagpole will be moved to the area in front of First Impression and will fly the American and Alabama flags. Sanders went to different businesses today and explained the changes, and business owners seem to be excited for the renovations. Landscaping brings out the beauty of a place and, and we need a little, uh, little work on the landscaping down here and I, I believe it's going to just uplift the downtown area and, and, and bring in some more business. Sanders feels that the community will also benefit from the renovations. This is the heart of Troy, Alabama and it's one of those areas that we need to preserve and continue to help prosper and grow. Judson Garner, Troy Trojan Vision News. Troy City Council's next meeting will be Tuesday, June 25th at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers in City Hall. The delegates of Girls State continue to learn lessons in leadership and government. And last night, the girls witnessed an act of patriotism. Andrew Clay has more. Girls State continued as attendees filed into the track and field complex to learn how the American flag is disposed of properly. We think everyone should know how to dispose of a flag because when we think of the flag, we think of our symbol of freedom. I pledge allegiance to the flag, a symbol of all the veterans and patriots whose blood has been spilled in the name of preserving our freedom. Learning about this process is more than just pomp and circumstance. Patriotism is a big part of Girl State and they leave here with a whole lot more patriotism. I want them to appreciate the sacrifices of the people who've gone before them. And that sacrifice hit home for many of the girls as they watched their flag burn. The commitment that all of these soldiers, men and women, put behind it is all symbolized in the flag. I think people take for granted the American flag and what it represents. The audience was not alone when the ceremony touched their hearts. The retirement of a flag hits home for the American Legion as well. It touches my heart. Being a soldier, serving in the U.S. Army for seven years, and being able to come out with the American Legion and dispose of the flag properly, it really hits home with me. Girl State makes a real impression on these young women. Most of them have never seen a flag disposal ceremony. During the ceremony, the flag is inspected and verified by its battle scars before being burned and taken to its final resting place. The girls head home with a new appreciation for old glory. It's a real meaningful thing for these girls after they leave Girl State, what may have just been a everyday sort of uh, activity at school, pledging allegiance to the flag, turns into something very solemn to them when they leave. Andrew Clay, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Girl State continues through the end of the week and concludes on Friday. Well, Bailey, once a month, Troy Regional Medical Center provides area women the chance to meet to discuss issues that affect them. That's right, Brittany. And this month, the hospital brought in a woman that can give a personal perspective on national politics. Sir Christina Cook has the story. 
Wednesday afternoon, many women gathered for the monthly female factor luncheon where Congresswoman Martha Roby spoke about current government issues. It's um, a program that we put on for women. It's all about women's issues, um, things that are important and uniquely to women. It's just a Troy community thing. It's been going on for about a year. Several organizations put it together um, because we were we have so many women um, in the community, in the org different organizations where we work, and we thought it would be a great time to bring us all together for things that we're that are important to us. Focusing on a more serious topic than usual, Congresswoman Martha Roby addressed several issues from education to government assistance programs to the attendees. I was very interested in hearing about our troops over in Afghanistan, the plans for them in the future, and everything that goes on with our Department of Defense. It was so wonderful to have Martha here with us today to update us on what's going on in our country, and she's just a fabulous speaker. It was a really good time. The program not only provides women a chance to learn about important topics pertaining to their life, it also gives them a chance to come together and socialize. Looking around at the really diverse group of women that we have, we have from every socioeconomic type, um, every socioeconomic group that we have in Pike County, we have from like 20 years old all the way up. Um, we have black, we have white, we have such a great diverse group of women and that's the part that I enjoy. And how do the women of Troy feel about female factor? I only miss them when I when I just have to, when it's a necessity. I just, I really have a great time here and always learn a lot from the speakers. The next Female Factor will be held Wednesday, July 11th at noon in the studio where a dietitian and skin expert will speak about how to keep your body and skin healthy during the summer. Female Factor is open to any woman who wishes to attend. And now, taking a look at news from around the state. In Montgomery, a law enforcement official says that police have arrested a man accused of killing three people near Auburn University over the weekend. Authorities say Desmonte Leonard is wanted for killing three people and wounding three at a party near Auburn University on Saturday. And in Foley, Governor Robert Bentley visited the Gulf Coast to promote new laws designed to make homeowners insurance more accessible and affordable. One law allows homeowners to establish a catastrophe savings account to pay a higher deductible which would help lower the cost of their insurance. And in Dothan, the Bama Jam 2012 Music Festival opens Thursday at noon. The Dothan Eagle reports that 61 music performances are planned during the three-day festival just north of Enterprise. Country music artist Tim McGraw highlights Thursday's lineup. Still to come on Troy Church and Vision Nightly News Game 1 of the NBA Finals was last night and Dustin Carroll will join us next in sports with all the details. But first, the Sandusky trial heats up as another accuser comes forward. We'll have more on that story after the break. Gallegos in Belfont, Pennsylvania. Another accuser takes the witness stand in the case against Jerry Sandusky. We'll have that story coming up. Over the course of time, Troy has consistently turned out quality graduates. We're trying to develop um, future leaders. If it had not been for Troy University, I would have never had the honor of being the Alabama Teacher of the Year. We want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act. And we do that within the framework of one real university. Troy University. In class. Online. Within reach. Troy.edu. It's a fear death. Massive earthquake has rocked the city. West Metro disaster peace region has ever been. When a disaster strikes. Time is a killer. The UN Central Emergency Response Fund jumpstarts relief efforts which saves lives. Help us help in time. Donate now at rapiddisasterrelief.org. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we'll go to Brittany Harris at the Global News Desk. Brittany? Thank you, Bailey. The father of a key witness and more accusers took the stand at Sandusky's sex abuse trial. Manuel Gaez has the latest from the courthouse in Bellefonte, Pennsylvania. 
Three more accusers describe Jerry Sandusky's alleged sexual abuse of them in his home and on Penn State's campus. Through tears, a 23-year-old known as victim number five testified Sandusky exposed himself, touched his genitals, then made him fondle Sandusky in a campus shower before the 12-year-old got away and got dressed. The boy testified he never told anyone, saying he was embarrassed and wanted to forget. Mr. Sandusky took him from the weight room to the sauna to the shower. A familiar story. Earlier, a 25-year-old known as victim number 10 told jurors Sandusky pinned him down in his basement and performed oral sex on him and made him reciprocate. The man testified the former coach threatened him, saying, if you tell anyone, you will never see your family again. But he said Sandusky later apologized and said he loved him. All of the accusers met Sandusky through the charity he founded for at-risk youth. One of the witnesses admitted he later spent time in prison for drugs and robbery, but says he's doing better now with a girlfriend and baby on the way. On cross-examination, the defense is trying to point out inconsistencies in the accusers' stories, trying to suggest they may be collaborating. Earlier, the father of former assistant coach Mike McQuarrie described a call he received from his son after he allegedly saw Sandusky abusing a boy in a Penn State shower. He told his son to call his Penn State boss, Coach Joe Paterno, but the defense questioned why no one ever called 911. Manuel Gallegas, CBS News, Belfont, Pennsylvania. The head of the largest bank in the U.S. went to Washington Wednesday to answer questions about bad bets that turn into billions in losses. He called it an isolated incident and said some executives may have their pay taken back. Danielle Nottingham has more from Capitol Hill. Stop! Capitol Police escorted protesters out of the hearing room where the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase came to explain how his bank lost more than $2 billion on risky trades. Jamie Dimon apologized but said he wants Congress to put it in perspective. No client, customer or taxpayer money was impacted by this event. Senators asked Dimon why he was pointing the finger at the bank's investing unit. Uh, shouldn't you take personal responsibility since they were following the, the game plan that you personally laid out? That's why I'm here. We made a mistake. I'm absolutely responsible. The buck stops with me. Diamond did say Chase will probably take payback from senior executives involved in the risky trades. The hearing comes as Congress finalizes new banking regulations, including the so-called Volcker Rule, designed to prevent banks from making risky trades for their own profit. It hasn't been written yet. It's very complicated. It may very well have stopped parts of what this portfolio morphed into. Lawmakers are trying to get a handle on whether big banks are still a big risk. What would you do to make our system safer? The biggest disappointment I've had is that we never actually sat down, uh, Republicans, Democrats, businesses, and had real detailed conversations about what went wrong, what needs to be fixed. Diamond insisted there are some parts of stricter regulation that he does support. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Washington. 